My name is Veronique Haddad. I work in business development for McDonald Detweiler & Associates and I work in the ground systems division, so dealing with ground stations for optical and radar satellites. I've done some work with uh, the Sauter School of Business, helping out with networking events and helping the students, especially the MMECM program, the students understand how to network and what are some key things they should be looking for when they're networking or applying for jobs. And I've also done some work with the Graduate Career Services, same idea, helping students understand what are some of the next steps they need to take when they're starting to look at not just their their um, graduate degree but also what they want to do career-wise. I have a master's degree in mechanical engineering from a university in Paris and after that I went on to get a master's of management with the Sauter School of Business at UBC. If a student is trying to decide between an, ap an academic career or a, an industry career, the key thing would be to talk to people who are in both of those, those sectors. So get in touch with your professors or other professors that are in fields that you would be interested in doing research in. And on the other hand, get in touch with people who are in the industry that you would be interested in working in and really try to understand not just what you think that job is but really what it entails on a daily basis so get an idea of what they do on a typical day if there is such a thing such a thing as a typical day uh, understand what their their yearly goals are what their career aspirations are and how they think they're going to reach them and then try to understand if those daily goals, daily objectives, yearly objectives align with what you see yourself doing or if there are big discrepancies if maybe some of the things really attract you and other things you're really not interested in and then from there really get an idea of, of what you think would be best suited for yourself. I think one of the things you need to look at is you're coming out of a graduate degree which means that you probably have a very specific specialization in a certain area of research. But that area of research probably has some great real world applications. So try to understand what those applications are and how they're being used currently or how they might be used in five years in different areas of the industry. And also understand that coming out with a graduate degree doesn't just mean that you're specialized in a field, it also means that you were able to focus on a specific topic for whatever amount of time it took you to get either your master's degree or your PhD. And that's really important to an employer, that you have that concentration level that allowed you and that determination that allowed you to get to that level of education. I think when you're looking at skills that you want to highlight, it's, it's really a mix between your academic skills and also your, your life skills. So it, it's going to be a combination of everything that you've achieved in your graduate degree, whether it's learning how to use a specific program that might be very applicable to a certain industry or certain lab techniques or whichever you've been using in your degree. But it's also, it goes beyond that. It goes to what do you do on a day-to-day -day basis other than than school work. What were your summer jobs? What did you learn in those jobs? And, and everything that goes along with that. So maybe in a summer job you learn how to manage groups of people or you worked with a specific group of individuals and that might be very applicable to a job. Maybe not at the first degree but if you take it a step further all those skills are transferable and that's something that you really want to highlight because if you walk into a job interview or on your resume you say I have a graduate degree in such and such an area the employer knows that you are going to be good at that and that you are qualified from that standpoint but it's really important to highlight the other things that you're good at and the other things that you've learned how to do. Um, I think there are a lot of different places you want to look. A good place to start is your professors who either have connections to other professors in different areas of research that you're interested in. They might also have really good industry connections and that might be a good place to start. Your friends might have good connections whether they're working in an industry you're interested in or just through friends of friends can be fantastic connections without you even realizing it at first. The Career Centre might be a great place to start. Uh, the people there tend to have amazing connections in 
widely different industries or areas. And finally, professional associations are a great place to look. So for engineers, for example, the Association of Professional Engineers and Geoscientists, it's called APEG BC, might be a great place for you to start. Their seminars are usually great sources of not only information but also connections. So I think if you if you look at all those different avenues, so your, your professors, your friends, career services, and uh, professional associations, that's a really good place to start. And then you'll meet people there who will introduce you to more people who will introduce you to more people, and you'll end up with, with a huge network. It's going to be a matter of looking at the job you're applying for, whether it's a, an actual job posting or you're just in communication with somebody who's interested in your skill sets. It's understanding not just what skills are related to your degree, it's understanding what skills, what other skills they're looking for that are different from the ones you acquired in your degree. So as I was saying earlier, whether it's a job you did one summer or something you did on the side of your degree, volunteer work, etc., that may be very relevant as far as transferable skills go. So is it management of people, is it time management, things like that, that will be really, really important to an employer, but that aren't obvious if you're just saying, I have a graduate degree in such and such a field. I think my main advice would be think outside the box. Chances are you're going to change careers five or six times, maybe even ten times in your career. And what you're really good at and what you might end up really loving might be completely different to what you thought you'd be doing when you were in university. You might transfer completely, but still keeping a bit of your, your old graduate degree knowledge. For example, I'll use my case. I have an engineering degree and now I'm doing business development. So you'd think that they have nothing to do with each other, but at the same time having the engineering degree allows me to communicate with the engineers that I work with on a daily basis and without that I wouldn't be able to do my job nearly as well. So really think outside the box. Think of not only what you've done in school but what you really love, what you're good at, and maybe even where you see yourself in five, ten years. And it might seem like a stretch, but it might, so, might also be worth pursuing that, that opportunity or that dream. And it might take a few steps to get there, but if you have that vision that might be different from what you just think right up front, you'll probably get there a lot faster than if you're just thinking, oh, well, I have a degree in this, so I'm going to go work in the field that's directly related and then find yourself in a job that, yeah, you really have all the skills for, but isn't necessarily what you wanted to do. So yeah, really think of, think outside the box, what's my degree in, what do I love to do, what am I good at, and try to combine those three and talk with as many people as you can. Tell them what you're good at, tell them what you love, and try to get feedback from them on, maybe they've heard of a job that you don't even know exists. And, and from there you might, you might end up in a situation that you hadn't even dreamt of.